नमस्कार डियर स्टूडेंट्स मेनी टाइम्स यू हैव कंप्लेन दैट द एग्जामिनेशन आर ऑलवेज राउंड द कॉर्नर एंड यू नेवर गॉट एम्पल टाइम टू प्रिपेयर फॉर इट वेल गेस वॉट ड्यू टू दिस वर्ल्ड कंज्यूमिंग कोरोना वायरस द एंटायर यूनिवर्स हैज कंस्पायर टू पोस्टपोन योर एग्जामिनेशन एंड दैट गिव्स इज मोर टाइम टू एंगेज विद द टेक्स्ट दैट आर प्रिस्क्राइब इन द सिलेबस सो ऑन दैट नोट लेट मी टेक अप नोवेल टाइटल संगति बाय बामा विच इज पार्ट ऑफ आर कोर्स दलित लिटरेचर well uh, you are of course aware of bama she is one of the famous indian authors who writes in tamil and we also regard her as a dalit feminist author what do we mean by that you know that dalit literature as a literary movement which opposed caste based uh, discrimination drawing its inspiration from the writings of uh, dr b r ambedkar and his actions as well uh, began especially in maharashtra or maharashtra was the epicenter for this movement to take its initial roots and uh, through various movements like dalit panther movement and assembly of writers and activists through the publication of asmita others uh, dalit literature slowly and gradually took shape across the nation and it spread its wings through uh, the northern india where we have om prakash valmiki to the southern india where we have gogu syamala and of course uh, the author of sangati uh, as a feminist author uh, bama portrays the unique position of women who are caught in the web both of patriarchy as well as caste okay but before we go to the novel sangati let me briefly share with you an anecdote concerning how faustina suseraj became bama which is the pen name of the author of the novel under discussion today uh she was born in 1958 in a tamil christian family her family actually belonged to a community called paraya community about which she wrote extensively in her autobiography uh, karaka and also in this novel uh after her graduation she got the position of a teacher as a high in a high school but she did not find the position conducive enough for uh, for imparting value based education you know for bama education was not just meant to make students well versed with uh, the elements of grammar with the elements of geography etc she wanted her students to become the agents of change to bring positive social transformation in society therefore she left that job and joined a catholic institution as a nun where she thought she will have more access to the young minds that would come there to be educated but after working there for 7 years she found that even this institution did not provide her the proper ambience to pursue her goals and she quit that position as well but quitting a catholic institution where she worked as a nun is not as easy as quitting a job it comes from a spiritual calling quitting that position actually brought a kind of social disgrace to her family who even did not allow her to come back to her own house at that time absolutely broke with no resources with her with no plans for the future bama took guidance of a jesuit priest who asked her to document her intimate feelings her thoughts her experiences in her own village her own life in form of a confession god works in mysterious ways and uh, what she wrote became an autobiography titled karak which is the first dalit tamil autobiography when it was published it was not favorably received in fact in her own village people were extremely furious because they thought that they were poorly portrayed in the novel or poorly portrayed in the autobiography where their mentions came at the same time in the tamil literary world also it created a kind of storm because bama used a language that was used in her own village the rustic language the vernacular language that was actually spoken not the elite sophisticated language which has dominated the tamil literary scene since then till then by writing this particular book bama not only challenged the thematic but also the linguistic hegemony of not only tamil literature but indian literature in a general sense over a period of time this book became a kind of social document and it become became a kind of pioneering text of dalit literature uh, this book also was translated to english by lakshmi homestorm and went on to win the crossword book award in 2000 after that bama wrote the second book which is sangati a novel which was written in 1994 and was also translated by lakshmi homestorm mama wrote another novel titled one mom 
in 2002. She wrote a collection of short stories titled Kusumbakaran in 1996, another collection of short stories titled Oru Tattvam Erumayum in 2003. Her works have been translated into various Indian languages into English as well. Well, that is Bama for us. Uh, now, let us go to the novel Sangati. Now, what does the title Sangati mean in the first place? Sangati is the Tamil word which means news, events or happenings. Some things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. This title also tells us something about the plot of this narrative. Now, you know that E.M. Foster divided uh, a novel, uh, the structure of the novel into two elements, the plot and the story. What is the plot? Plot is the arrangement of the story elements in a way that creates a kind of dramatic tension. It evokes our curiosity, right? And story is just the chronological uh, story. I mean, what happens in one particular narrative. For example, a man and a woman ate one apple and fell down from heaven. That is the story of Milton's Paradise Lost. The plot is the arrangement of this particular story in a way that will evoke our curiosity, that will stay with us for a long time, the way Milton actually wrote it. In case you have recently read a novel of Salman Rushdie or uh, let's say um, R.K. Narayan, you will find that the plots are very intricate with twists, with sudden turns, with suspense. This novel is written in a pretty straightforward manner, uh, which is also exemplary of the social, realistic, autobiographical element that is characteristic of Dalit literature. Now, Dalit literature is partial towards social realism because they believe in, in uh, let's say, Sarachandra Mukti Bodh's words uh, to, to, to bring in a kind of social transformation. Uh, Sarachandra Mukti Bodh says in his essay, What is Dalit Literature? A Dalit point of view constitutes a clear diagnosis of a particular social reality and a sanguine hope for its desirable transformation. And therefore, Dalit literature, which is objective in nature, is pointing out the problems of our society, holding a mirror to nature, holding a mirror to the existing Indian society and trying to show reality as it appears. This plot of the plot of Sangati is also episodic in nature. What do we mean by an episodic plot? Our lives, for example, are episodic in nature. See, our childhood preoccupations, the people that we knew in childhood, the events we were engrossed in during our childhood were very, very different from the events that uh, kind of overwhelmed us when we were adolescent and are absolutely different from the events that we are engrossed now that we are adult, aren't we? Now, Similarly, an episodic plot also does not have a central plot. It has many, many plots. So in one episode you learn about, let's say, a bunch of characters, what happens to them. Then you go to another event and then you are introduced to a number of other characters. And slowly and gradually uh, you come to know about a variety of people, about a variety of events. This, uh, uh, this novel also employs the first person narrative technique. Now, what does that mean? In case the narrator of a work of fiction is also a character in the fiction itself, then we call that first person narrative. Now, in case, now let us not confuse the narrator with the author. The author of this particular novel, let's say, is Bama. But the narrator is the voice which tells us what happens in the novel. Uh, let's say uh, the novel by Arundhati Roy, God of Small Things, that is written in third person narrative. There, we do not know who is the narrator and the narrator tells us that, okay, this happened here, Amo fell in love with Velutha and then this happened and that happened, so on and so forth, right? This novel is written in first person narrative, the way Salman Rushdie's Midnight Children was written, where Salim Sinai was describing, okay, this happened to me. In this novel also, the narrator tells us the stories of various people uh, in her community through her conversation with her grandmother, with her cousins, with her own mother, with her friends and through her own observation, through her own anecdotes. Lakshmi Holmstrom, who translated this novel as well as Karaku, which is the autobiography of Bama, tells us that in case Karaku is the autobiography of Bama, then this novel is the autobiography of a community. And the community that is, that, that is depicted here, the pariah community. The community which had converted into Christianity 
two generations before the narrator of this novel and the unique problems unique challenges that it faces in the modern times okay now let us go to some of the major characters of this novel and try to find out what major events they were engrossed in one of the major characters in this novel memorable characters in this novel is velayamma kijavi velayamma kijavi is the grandmother of our narrator she is also referred to as patti which seems to be the tamil word for grandmother she is a village midwife no she has not received any formal training or education in delivering babies but there's not a single child in her community in the village which has somehow not been uh, delivered by her and uh, not only that she tells us interesting stories about their birth by employing this character the narrator has introduced us to three generations of women of paraya community velayamma kijavi uh, married govindan who left her and uh, after that velayamma had to work herself in order to sustain her children during her time she also survived the famine the terrible famine which caused the lives of many people of her community after her her two daughters sevati and uh, um, uh, perima perima who is the aunt of her narrator and sevati who is the mother of her narrator their stories are also introduced to us and after them our narrator who is the daughter of sevati and her siblings like seyakuddi mariamma and annamma we are introduced to their stories as well in the story of um velayamma kichavi we come to know that she has not only observed her society but has also uh, inherited the age old wisdom that she imparts to her own grandchildren she realizes that her society has been extremely partial to the male heir to the male children in case a male child is crying outside then it is more likely that the mother will go and fetch the child and try to you know address his concerns than a female child while she knows that very well she also enforces this particular doctrine in her own life she does not allow her own grandchildren to accompany her when she is going to town therefore our narrator does not go with her to the town therefore she does not even allow her grandchildren to roam around in the night in the village now why does she do that doesn't that also make her male chauvinist a kind of heteronormative matriarch well it does so but velayamma believes in acquiescence now remember babu rao bagul's essay uh, dalit literature is but human literature in which it tells us that the earlier heroes like karna and ekala with the earlier dalit heroes were courageous heroes but they were uh, reconciled to the status quo they were the ones who were acquiescent with what is happening because they had to also survive velayamma kijavi through her age old wisdom realizes that in case a girl ventures out in the night then she has more danger from the uh, rich landlords that are you know waiting to pounce upon them than perhaps the jungle beasts and that is why in order to ensure the survival she does not allow them to roam perhaps with as much freedom as she would allow a male heir to roam around her two children sevati and perima are also partially acquiescent in nature Perima is so acquiescent that her husband Samudrakani beats her to death literally when Velayamma Kijavi goes to plead for her own daughter then Samudrakani tells her that she is my wife i can beat her and if i want i can also kill her and that's exactly what he does Velayamma Kijavi has absolutely uh, you know no way to protect her own daughter the third generation of women which constitutes our narrator and also her siblings also shows us the result of that kind of a strategy in that society and here let us uh, be introduced to the story of mariamma who is the cousin of our narrator who is the daughter of perimma who has recently died now mariamma since her childhood has taken the responsibility of her own family she is the eldest daughter of perimma the eldest uh, uh, sibling of the, the the eldest daughter of perimma one day when she goes to the jungle to fetch firewood she halts at a watershed to drink water in that watershed a rich upper caste landlord called kumar sami ayya tries to molest her somehow she manages to free herself and flees back home but she is unable to report this to anyone she does not do that why doesn't she do that now 
when a woman's modesty is outraged then of course she is humiliated by in person physically but in case she reports it then she exposes herself to further humiliation and that is what mariamma thinks and that is why she does not report it to the village headman the, the headman of the community nattamai on the other hand kumar samiyaya reports the same incident to nattamai giving it a different color he tells him that it was mariamma who, who was found in a compromising position with another boy called manikam in his watershed and he demands justice he demands a fine to be levied upon her mariamma is brought to the jury system mariamma's father samudrakani also goes there now remember he is the same person who abused his own wife to death who is still having liaison with other women but he is never accused of that lest punished for that but he has to pay fine for an alleged crime that his own daughter committed which we know is false this particular incident draws us into the juries into the judicial system the local judicial system of the village and we get to know that the women and especially dalit women had absolutely no say in that another interesting character of this novel is maikanni she is an 11 year old neighbor of her narrator she is the friend of her narrator who works in a match factory one day she is beaten by her father for having spent 1 rupee to buy an ice cream out of her own salary she is also punished by annachi who is the manager of the match factory for taking nature's call she also fights with a boy on the bus which she takes to go to her factory for the position of the window seat now even though this girl suffers from physical punishment and you know gets into fights with so many people almost on a daily basis she is still bubbly and she laughs and she enjoys her life she enjoys the films of rajnikanth she enjoys the songs that are played in the factory she enjoys the bus ride to her workplace which takes her out of the village she enjoys the fact that there is a lavatory installed in the factory now you see the perks and benefits that a capitalistic society employs in order to increase its own productivity are actually enjoyed by a laborer who has absolutely no consideration regarding their usage maikanni is the symbol of hope the symbol of the survival instinct that bama so optimistically finds in some people in her community when the same incident of uh, attempted molestation takes place with maikanni when she goes to the jungle to uh, fetch firewood and there was a boy who asks her to get closer to him then she just leaves the bundle and runs away she survives such Uh, attack on her own honor almost on a daily basis and still maintains her sanity on the other hand there are some women who are perhaps not as strong not as head strong who are not built with as much tough fiber as you know maikani was and that takes us to the story of possession in the village there is a pay which is a ghost of esaki the story of the ghost is also extremely tragic Esaki the ghost now was actually born in a family with seven brothers and all the brothers showered their unhindered affection on her one day she commits a crime which has absolutely no pardon in her, in her community that is the crime of falling in love outside her caste when she realizes that she will not be approved by her family her marriage will not be approved by her family she looks with the person that she loves over a period of time her brothers actually come to know her whereabouts and then they come there and they convince her that the family has finally accepted her along with her husband and then they take her along with them back to the village the way to the village however they take her to a jungle and brutally kill her since that day esaki who had recently also conceived a child is wandering the jungles of the village as a ghost and takes possession of anybody who sees her at that instant our narrator breaks character and tells us directly addressing the audience directly addressing the reader that of all the people that she had seen possessed by the ghost she found that almost all of them were dalit women why is it that it was only dalit women who get possessed by the ghost and the narrator has a theory she says that 
the life of a dalit women is so hard you know working from dawn to dusk in either the factories or the farms of the land owners who are always looking out for a chance to you know molest them out with the modesty and having come back from their work they have the responsibility of feeding their own children working doing the household chores and at night they do not have the rest because they also have to satisfy the physical hunger of their husbands under those circumstances those who can manage become extremely irritating annoying quarrelsome women who fight on the streets and those who can tolerate that kind of inhuman treatment of their body and mind sometimes become possessed by ghosts the depiction of this pay or this ghost with an extremely sad story is not only the delineation of a kind of supernatural element which is part of the belief system of a community but also the symbol of an intense psychological trauma that a dalit women has to undergo mandatorily in that community and why does she undergo that the patriarchal system which has taken possession of the body as well as the psyche of the women sometimes makes her so weak that she has to be beaten by a wizard by a necromancer by a tantric in order to get the ghost out of her own body but it is not only the sad stories that are assembled in this novel in fact bama tells us my mind is crowded with many anecdotes stories not only about the sorrows and tears of dalit women but also about their lively and rebellious culture the eagerness not to let life crush or shatter them but to swim vigorously against the tide and here i have to mention the story of samugga kijavi she is a middle aged woman paraya woman who fights her own little fights for example we get a mention with the election or the what the villages call the voting business episode during the election the different contesting parties take the village women the village people to the polling booth and after they have casted their vote they leave them there they don't take them back to their houses this lady too is escorted to the polling booth and when she reaches there after she has done her business she is left there but samuga kijavi is not the one to be let down she asks the driver to take her back to her house but the driver denies her then she tells him that in case you don't take me back to my house then i will tell all the women that you do this and they will not vote for you in fear the driver takes her back to her house in the car i have having reached her house samuga tells them that i took a ride in their car and you know what i did not even vote for them another event concerning samuga involves a well of a rich landlord from which the villagers are forbidden to draw water what does she do she breaks the fence jumps into the well and takes bath there until the landlord comes when the landlord comes then he is too shocked to say anything Samuga spits into the well gets out of it and tells him that your well is not good enough for me to take bath the landlord is too shocked to comment as Samuga leaves intrepidly with water dripping from her wet clothes now compare her to Maheshwata Devi's Dopadi which is translated to english by Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak when the sena naik tried to molest dopadi in front of his troop then dropadi in an act of unprecedented rebellion disrobes herself and is not ashamed of her nakedness and by doing that she challenged the patriarchal hegemony the brute power that was used by sena naik now the narrator also gives us another example of the same kind of subversive resistance and this time from the character of rakamma you know the narrator tells us that the village women fight with their husbands the and are beaten by their husbands almost on a daily basis on the street and one such woman was rakamma whose husband was dragging her by her hair and was beating her brutally sometimes to her stomach as well at that time that rakamma has two choices either like perimma you know acquiesce and uh, allow fate to do its worst and the second is to fight she does the same she also shouts obscenities at her own husband and exposes herself the narrator tells us that she was also shocked by the kind of behavior that was put up by the lady but then she realized that only after she screamed and shouted and behaved like that that he let her go in case we continue to be frightened the narrator tells us everyone will take advantage of us by such instances the narrator 
celebrate the subversive protests that some of the stronger women put forth within their available means. The narrator also acquaints us with the unique challenges of the pariah community. For example, she tells us that uh, the hope of equality, access to education, sanitation and health with which these people had embraced Christianity failed. Because will you go to a school when you have to feed your children and to feed your children you have to work from dawn to dusk and that is what most of the women in the community did and that's why they had no access to education. In the church the women who giggled or who laughed unfamiliar with the peculiar ceremonies of the church were shouted at by the elder men and were asked to get out. At the judicial system by Natamai, also the women were shouted at, abused and were asked to get outside. So you see that these women had absolutely no say in the uh, affairs of the village. Not only that, before conversion and those women who belong to the other communities and are not Christians but still are so-called lower caste, they have at least the so-called privilege of uh, carrying on alliances with other other men or you know divorcing their husband and getting married to others but as catholic women these women are not even allowed to leave their husbands however brutal they are and that is what happens to of course perima the aunt of our narrator at the end of the narrative we might ask a stereotypical question who is the hero of this novel is it Vilayama kijavi the village midwife is it the narrator herself who tells her stories about her own family, her own friends? Who is the hero? The hero of this particular novel is the community itself. Just like the hero of Raja Rao's Kantapura was Kantapura itself. This novel can be seen as a kind of social document, even though fictional, which tells us about the unique problems that people of that particular community face but also it has resonances, emotional and also factual resonances across the nation. It may perhaps be similar to various other communities whose stories are yet to be told by people like Bama. Okay, at the end of this lecture, I'll ask you a question. We have been introduced to various characters in this novel but I haven't given you the name of the narrator. If you haven't read the novel, then read the novel and find out the name of the narrator and let me know. Dhaniwad.